Hi guys, my name is Audrey and today I would like to go through this calendar scheduler which is written using Java Swing for one of my university's project. And let's start. Okay, I hope this application doesn't crash on me anymore because this is like the 10th time <laughs> that I have been recording this. Okay, so let's start. Um, as you can see here, we have our calendar scheduler and we have our today's date on the top and we have an interactive calendar on the left and by interactive I mean you can click on these buttons that it will scroll through the calendar and um, there are different color blocks which represents different things so the orange blocks are the days where we have um, tasks created so you can see there are tasks for these days and for the empty ones there isn't any tasks created yet so um, that's the calendar and for today it's 14th of June so this block here that looks like uh, olive green, that's today. Okay, so that's the interactive calendar. And on the right hand side, we do have this task list. And this list is just a list of tasks. And um, by task, it means um, a task that has a title, time, category, and description. Okay, and on the home page, we also have the new button where you can create new tasks. Okay, now we have our second page, which is the day page. And how to get to the day page is we can double click on the day which we want to go to. So let's take this as an example 14th of May. We have five tasks. Okay, so when I double click, you can see that this brings up 14th of May on the top that's a large date which is clickable you can see this little um, hand there that's clickable which when you click on it it will bring you back to the home page and we have five tasks for today the same is showing in the home page it is also showing in the day page we have five tasks and the second and the third one is done and on oh, okay let me mention this first we do have the same add button here to add a task and we have a notes um, section on the right so this notes section you can add a reminder or any any notes that you you need like uh, for example don't forget to buy milk okay and once you click out of this um, text panel it will be automatically saved to the database okay and on the bottom this is my favorite so that's the code uh, of the day and we do have 365 codes added to our database so we won't have a duplicate code and this code is based on um, the day of the year. So let's say it's uh, maybe 5th of January. That will be the 5th day of um, the year. So it will get code number 5. Okay, so it will not duplicate. So let's go back to, the home, to our home page. I would like to mention this. So it goes back to today, 14th of June and we have our task on the right okay so this is the done or not done checkbox it is also saved automatically to the database every time when we click um, when we uh, mark it as done or undone so i will go ahead and mark this as un not done and then let's go to the day page it will be updated as well okay so here if i mark it as done and let's go back to the home page it will also mark it as done. Another thing that I would like to mention is how to delete the task. Okay, so to delete, you have to go into 
the task and you can click on delete here okay so once you click on delete it will ask if you are, are sure to delete if yes then it will go ahead and delete and no it will just leave leave it leave it as it is so let's click yes here just to show you that it's gone so let's go here it's gone okay and let me see if i have anything that i missed um, I think there is another okay there is another uh, error message that I would like to uh, show you which is when you add a task you need to provide a title so if you do not provide a title it will throw a message here as well so title cannot be empty and you will need to provide a title okay I'll show you how to add a task now task one or anything that you want and then you can click on the category let's put social see okay so there you go that's a task created um, one last thing which i'm really proud of is you see these little green bars on the left they are in different color based on the category so general task will have this green bar and holiday category will have this orange and personal task will have this maroon yep so every different category will have a different colored um, bar and th by category i mean these categories okay so if you change it to holiday let's see it will change based on the category okay so that's everything that is in this calendar scheduler and something that i would like to bring up is the technology part so as you know this is written in java swing so i'm not going to go into that but um, the database so for this project our lecturer actually wants like a runnable jar so he doesn't want to start a database himself and you know he have to um, run the database and then run the application okay so we need to have a database that will spin up when the application is being start uh, st uh started or start up okay so uh what i choose to use for this project is um, h2 database so h2 database is an embedded database that can be used so it will start up every time when the application is being start started so when we double click on the jar it will start the database as well which is cool but the problem is every time when we start up our application the database will be empty so every time it when we start up it will be empty that means that whatever is done um, previously will be gone so that is actually um, solved by using a dot sql um, file so what it does is every time when we spin up this application and it will check for this um, it will check for this calendar scheduler db snapshot I believe it's this one I probably changed the name so it should be this scheduler um, yes scheduler db snapshot so it will check for this file and if this file is not existing that means that it's the first fresh start of this application then it will go ahead and create a database it will then read in the 365 codes from the codes.txt and write it into our database um, and create all the tables that is that are required okay and when we uh, finish uh, using the app and when we close the app it will then write all the changes to the database out to our calendar scheduler um, db snapshot file so what happens is next time when we restart our application it will then look for this file and read in whatever is uh, written out so in this case we can persist the data which is what i wanted for this project so let's have a look in this 
um, snapshot what is in the file. So you can see we have our, um, I have changed this. So just in case. And then we have different tables. We have the task table. We have, um, so that's the task that we created. Okay. And then we have our um, codes table which we have the 365 codes here written in and we also have the notes table where we uh, add notes for different dates right remember <laughs> okay so that's how the snapshot.sql file looks like so if it's existing it on the application start it will first read uh, create the tables and then populate the data from uh, our previous um, run. So that's something that is really cool. Okay, so I think that covers everything that I want to talk through um, for this calendar scheduler. I hope this helps you at some stage maybe you are doing your college assignment or um, just looking into java swing okay so i hope this helps and that's everything thanks for listening i hope you have a great day bye